What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium, spoiler-filled discussion of, of course, The Matrix Resurrections. Uh, as always, if you like what you see, hit the comments below, hit the like, subscribe, all that good stuff. So you've seen my review by now, at least I hope you have. You know what I think of it. What I wanted to do is uh, Jacob from Jacob Anders Reviews has, of course, done a couple of spoiler reviews with me already. I also went on his channel and did one for Spider-Man No Way Home, definitely checked it out. You know, also check out his channel, which is amazing. He posts videos every single day, which I think he's a madman, but he does it with reverence and style and makes me uh, <laughs> a little bit jealous because he has kids and everything. So I gave him a lot of credit for taking the time to do that. But Thanks. Jacob, welcome back to the channel. The last time we talked was, of course, uh, outside Twilight Zone was uh, Dune, which we both really liked. And um, The Matrix, as we know, considered probably one of the most influential movies of all time it had some of the most crazy action of all time definitely inspired by anime and all these kind of you know uh japanese influences and you know samurai movies and stuff like that and so when the matrix reloaded and revolutions came out we were i were you working at the theater were you working at a theater at the time when those movies came out or you said you worked at a theater right not worked at a video store uh oh yeah that's right yeah video store I was when the first one came out, when Reloaded and Revolutions came out. No, by that point, I was not. I was working in hotels. Okay. So you 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 laughed and said, screw theaters, which I don't blame you because I was working at, I worked at the theater the year X2, Matrix, Reloaded, and Revolutions, and Return of the oh, King came out of oh, AMC year. and Disney. 2003, yeah, it such was, a great year. <laughs> yeah, it was. It really was. But that was a nightmare. But we can both pretty much agree that the Matrix Reloaded had some really cool moments. I think the freeway chase and the stuff in the castle. Chateau. The Chateau scene. Chateau. Yeah, Chateau was really awesome. I don't know how you feel about the Burley bra, but for the most part, it was it was a complete mess of a movie. It really was. It was, you know, the philosophical waxing that the Wachowskis were doing that because they were so up their butt and stuff like that. <laughs> um it was you know it was a mess and then the revolutions is just i don't understand what the fuck happened there you know excuse my language but i have no idea what that movie was doing i know it was trying to complete a, a two-part arc but it did it with such uh garbage and such nonsensical bs and i was pissed and i left the theater almost wanting to cry in a sense in my <laughs> mind because it was so bad and the super burly bra was just nonsense and i don't know what, what what's your overall take on this trilogy what did your overall take on how you feel about it, all that stuff before we get into re resurrections okay so as far as the matrix as a whole mm -hmm. goes i i like the trilogy um the first yeah. one the first movie is is amazing it's genre defining mm -hmm. it really resonated throughout so many movies and was parodied more times than probably almost anything i mean like it was yeah. in, you couldn't get away from the matrix and everything the mm -hmm. second one reloaded i didn't hate it but i didn't yeah i, I mean it's not the worst in the world I, yeah yeah i didn't look it it left something to be desired in some ways it was very convoluted it mm -hmm. was overly long um they definitely could tighten that thing up i wasn't opposed to the story they were telling they just like I said, it was a bit too long. However, yeah, that movie made up for it in just pure spectacle. Um, mm -hmm. The there's a 28 minute and some change segment in the middle of the film that really, without this segment, and yeah, I know it's just action, but it's so well done. That yeah. Without this, the movie, I probably wouldn't look on the movie as with such favorable favorable view, and that all starts mm -hmm. with the chateau scene. Where they come in, the Merovingian and all his uh, outcasts come in and start shooting at him, and he stops the bullets from that point for about 28 minutes up until the point mm -hmm. where Neo saves Morpheus and the key, make, key master, key maker, key masters, yeah, key, masters yeah. and uh, spins up in the air towards the camera and links are like, yes, and does that goofy thing. Those two parts right there, that or that part, that entire sequence, all that runs mm -hmm. together is just so fucking awesome <laughs> like yep, yep. that is the one when i turn that i will randomly hear there just turn that 30 minute scene on and watch it because even until this day it is so well done and yeah there's cg in it but a lot of it is practical 
and it's just a little freeway for it yeah yeah it, it is just an amazing scene that really does kind of make the movie um mm-hmm. everything else the burly brawl i like the idea behind the burly brawl and if you can look past the extremely dated even kind of at the time i think too ambitious at the time uh cgi yeah. uh for like the faces and stuff it's it's a fun scene it's it's mm-hmm. neat i like what they're trying to convey there but yeah that cgi where they they, they took it too far where they stopped being right. practical and they did like full CGI people doing stuff and they just weren't there yet. Um, but that one, yeah, I, I do overall enjoy the film and a lot of it does have to do with those scenes. No, res- uh, uh, Revolutions, I don't hate Revolutions as much as some people, but Revolutions is just kind of there. It like there's Yeah, it doesn't it, feel like it has a soul. Yeah, it feels like, okay, we've got to wrap this thing up. Mm. The first or the first sequel, Reloaded, it seemed like they really were hyped about making that when they wanted to tell that story. And Resurrections, it seems like they, I mean, uh, Revolutions, it seems like they were just like, okay, now we have to finish this. We did all the cool stuff yeah. in the last movie. Now, this, the big fight in the end, while yet yeah, still had a bit too ambitious CG in the faces mm-hmm. department, it was cool. I mean, I like that. I'm not a fan of Dragon Ball Z, but I understand that people that are, that's kind of like that movie putting you know on screen for the first time pretty much right. um or that show or whatever it is so i really did enjoy I, I mean i enjoyed that um the whole it gets really religious in the end mm-hmm. <laughs> like lots of symbolism neo the one all that and even the way he dies like <laughs> on the cross and all that stuff i mean it was fine i was okay with the way they ended it it did i'll give it this much it did take this epic story and wrap it up and give us a an ending that i didn't just absolutely hate I oh like, yeah no i, I just puke all yeah, over I, I hate this what the fuck um it was i thought it, it, I was, thought it was yeah no i thought like you said the ending i'm not adverse to what happened with the architect in uh return or um reloaded, reloaded. yeah if you like it's very deep and philosophical and if you think about it and you actually pay attention to it there's a lot of interesting material there the Mm -hmm. problem is you have like you said with the symbolism you have a summer blockbuster trying to go super religious unlike you know the passion (laughs) of the christ or some nonsense like that (laughs) and you're turning your character into a christ-like figure which the one is a christ-like figure in its own right but people don't want to watch that they want to watch the freeway chase and they want to see what the Wachowskis are inspired by, which is what the Matrix works so well, and I just think here in those two films, it was it was just so baked in, so always lathered in with too much, you know, frosting or whatever, and it just I don't I don't know. Well, it was like they after the first one came out and it was had that mind blowing twist mm-hmm. and all that. It's as if they said next time, well, we've got to one up ourselves there instead of just tell the story we want to tell. Hmm. we've got to one up it and we've got to take this idea like i didn't mind the architect i thought he was very concise and calculated and that's what a machine would be but it's like they over explained or tried to over explain what was going on while mm-hmm. sounding really trying to sound really smart and not that it wasn't a, a smart uh, move for the movie to make you know this isn't the first one you're not the first one um, and all that, but it's just like they they overcomplicated it, made it convoluted. So it was like there is interesting stuff he's saying there, but I feel like mm. they went out of their way to try and try and make it sound more intelligent than it was. Not to say it was dumb, it was intelligent, but in trying to make yeah. it seem even more intelligent to one up the last movie, it came across as just like, Whoa, why are you still talking? What is what? <laughs> and and you know. I didn't hate I didn't like I said I didn't hate that yeah. movie. I didn't hate what they were doing there I just thought that you know they made some decisions that I didn't totally love but overall the trilogy as a whole I do enjoy it I'll watch all yeah I mean it's unique movie. for what it is so um it's epic that it is that it yeah. is but um that leads us to us being now 18 years older this isn't crazy to think about that there are people in that time frame, they're graduating high school since the Matrix uh, re- uh, re- um, Revolutions came out. So mm-hmm. now we have 18 year olds seeing the Resurrections movie. And I'll lead off with this. You and I have very differing opinions on this movie. Yes, you have issues, but your reviews now released. My both our non spoiler reviews are now released. This movie. <laughs> 
is difficult to talk about in a sense without me wanting to scream my head off of yelling and going, what is Lana Wachowski thinking? But I appreciate the ambition. I do agree with Lily Wachowski that this may be a movie that probably shouldn't have been made, to be fairly honest. I mean, it depends on how you view. But starting out, what was your over... If you want to talk about it in a spoiler sense, what was your feeling on this movie? Like, where did you feel after watching it? How was your overall take? You know, what was your overall opinion, I guess? Okay, so overall, like you said, our, our at the end of the day, opinions on mm. this movie are different yeah. to a degree. Um, you had said you have difficult time talking about i don't think you didn't have much of a difficult time when we were talking in private about it. <laughs> no i i mean Actually, in, yeah like i mean in a sense that yeah i, I yeah, really, no. i'll just say it straight i hated this movie to be fairly yeah. honest i that's fine that's yeah. fine so. i didn't hate it um i didn't love it and i know i've said that mm. already about one of the other ones but i enjoyed it um yeah it, it did not live up to the first one by any means mm. i'll even say that it probably didn't in some regards live up to the second one reloaded i think it's better than the third one yeah um i agree with that and i do think that its narrative like its narrative structure is different very different than all three but i do Mm. think in my opinion less convoluted and more streamlined and to a degree and better than the sequels not the first one the first Mm. one is damn near perfect so i'm leaving that one out of the equation but as far as the other sequels go (laughs) I think narratively, this movie is better than Reloaded and Revolutions. But when it comes to the spectacle side of things, while the movie looks good, the action is well choreographed and all that, it's missing that Matrix thing, that thing that just wows you. I mean, they're, yeah. it's neat. And I don't know if that's because since those movies came out, we've gotten so many awe-inspiring things and it's doing the same thing it was then it's just not as ooh and ah now but really it's just i think i felt like each of the other movies had at least one film defining Mm -hmm. scene in it like we were talking about the freeway chase and chateau and reloaded and the uh the end fight scene uh between smith and neo and in resurrections and of course just the whole movie of part one but um this one didn't have that I think back to the action scenes and I'm like, I mean, they were all good. They were all solid. They were entertaining, but there's not that one that just stands out to me. There's not that one that I'm like, I want to go back and just watch that scene, like a big surround sound on a big screen and all that. There's not that one that was just like, Oh my God, this is amazing. It's just all, right. Oh yeah. This is all really good. Solid. And that, that seems really weird that I'm sitting here saying, Oh yeah, the action was all real good. But then at the same time I'm criticizing it. Cause I'm like, where's that set piece? Where's that thing that is just like, just, defines this movie as far as the action goes because i mean matrix is it's an action movie it defined the genre like i said about the the other Mm. ones so i feel like it needs that um some of the spoilers that we'll get into as far as this movie wasn't as spoiler heavy as i was expecting it to be no really only go ahead i was gonna say because you kind of know what the matrix is at this point so there's not really that like in the beginning in the original matrix movie people are like what the hell is the matrix what is even what is it? And then you find out it's a computer simulation program here. They're trying to make you surprised that, you know, uh, that Thomas Anderson is doing this. And it's just kind of revealed that it's just another form of the matrix, you know, basically rebooted. And um, going back to the action stuff, it's the you know, problem. That's what I they have should have called it, by the way, the matrix rebooted. You, Maybe it's because it's too yeah. close to the reloaded. I don't know, but yeah. Anyway just a thought yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of r's in this this franchise apparently <laughs> they love them r's no but um when you talk about the action and i apologize for cutting you off earlier so if there's anything no, you want to say please please, no, please cut me you're off good. at some point <laughs> um the action to me personally it does feel inspired it does feel that lana wachowski really wanted to give this movie a unique look to it, a unique take because if you look at the the simulation there is no green in the simulation so there there's yeah. definitely an attempt to try to make this unique but this movie relies a lot on nostalgia so it's relying on a lot of the wall jumping it's relying a lot of a new form of bullet time it's relying a lot on gunplay which is not a huge problem 
But there, like you said, there's nothing special. The train sequence, the fight sequence that brings back the Merovingian, the end sequence with the motorcycle and the people jumping out of, you know, doing the M. Night Shyamalan, jumping out of buildings thing. <laughs> and can, there, yeah, just... The Merovingian, can I get to that real quick? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why? go ahead. Go why? Ahead. Why? Because he was, I, he I, was like, I was excited. There. I'm like, they're bringing back the Merovingian and then he's like a bum. Fuck? he was there for just that is one of the criticisms i had is i don't know i don't think i touched on it in my review because it's trying to spoil things but he just <clears throat> he just showed up and there was yeah. absolutely no he could have been anybody that was like why on the armis again yeah why did we From Bond. bring this guy back but anyway that's just on that no no i mean it's <laughs> i mean we'll talk about it. like that sequence which is Jonathan Groff, who, if you might know from Hamilton and Frozen and stuff like that, he's playing Thomas Anderson's boss, and then he's a form of uh, Agent Smith, which this movie lacks sorely of not having Lawrence Fishburne and Hugo Weaving in it because they're so so special in this franchise. But he, he shows up when they go into the Matrix, and he's just there. He realizes that he's Agent Smith. They have some back and forth. There's a weird... This role is really weird, by the way, in this movie. And... They have a fight sequence, and then all of a sudden they bring. I'm assuming the the guys from the raid or the original Matrix Reloaded movie. I don't I don't know who these guys are, but they look like they're from the 90s with like all their costuming and stuff like that. And I just didn't find that sequence very interesting. I didn't find the fight sequence very very inspired. I mean, it was somewhat inspired, but I didn't feel like it was well choreographed. It felt like there was something missing. And that's what this movie's action's problem is. There feels like there's always something missing that, you know, even when they do the jump off the building and the the the, the bullet, you know, stopping and stuff like that, it's done so repetitively that it actually doesn't make it special anymore. But I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how you feel on that kind of uh, that kind of explanation. But yeah, the, the, the action just didn't feel special at all. It makes me wonder if, uh, because, you know, this is the first one where the Wachowskis aren't doing it together. You know, originally it was uh, Larry and, well, uh, Lana and, and what's, what's his Lily. sister? Her sister? Yeah. Lily. Yeah. Lana and Lily. I just think Lily, not to get political, but Lily was Andy, right? Or was uh Andy? No, Lily was Larry, I think. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. It makes you think that maybe, I'll just say Lily and lana but um, yeah, it, yeah lana man. may have been the more technical side mm. of the trio or the, of the duo and uh you know knew how to frame the shot knew how to shoot the cool action knew how to you know shoot the movie and make it look good and maybe lily was the one that was the idea man well idea woman and I mean, maybe it's together they probably, you know, complemented each other, I'm sure. But maybe more of the creative ideas and stuff were coming from Lily. And that's why we don't have like that big, ambitious action scene. That's why the, the reveals in the movie just seem kind of, yeah, that's fine. And why yeah. the movie, in my opinion, the movie felt well made. I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't like oh, a yeah, it's, mess. Yeah, it's beautiful. It, it's, it's competent for sure. But it was missing that something special that oomph that the Matrix has or the other Matrix yeah. films have. Yeah, this is not Vanquish. This is actually a, a somewhat competent made movie. So don't watch, <laughs> don't watch Vanquish, people. Don't don't ever watch that movie. Um, What's that movie with Lily? Uh, I mean, uh, Ro, uh, what's her name? Ruby Rose and Ruby Morgan Rose. Freeman. Did one of, yeah. did one of the Wachowskis pick that? No, no, I was just saying, okay, like, okay. when it comes to competency, <laughs> him, yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Um, let, let's talk about that. So the story basically revolves Neo or Thomas Anderson, however you want to call him, Keanu Reeves. He works for a computer software company, a game development company. And this movie starts out with Bugs and um, Sequoia, or not Sequoia, Bugs, and then they're like a computer guy or whatever, just kind of re-watching the original matrix but kind of redone in a different format so we see different angles we see you know a different person as trinity and it's kind of almost like a like almost like a, a television show or a movie show a reboot of that and then it plays out and then this is where we get like uh yayo abdul mateen who comes in as morpheus but he's an agent and i have to ask you before we get into like the thomas anderson neo stuff and like the video game stuff what did you think about where they were doing, where they were headed with the sequence? Like, you know, a lot of it like harkens back to the original Matrix, but it's, you know, she gets captured and all that stuff. Like, where were you, where was your mindset in this whole entire first sequence? Like when you watched it? 
because that was it was it was cool but it was just like oh first of all before before we continue the amc theater that i go to to watch this movie where i see the screens they need a projectionist because they don't know how to fix the app or aperture iris you know, it played in a, like a 1.85 ratio before I told them to fix it. They need to stop burning their popcorn and they need to turn the sound on when they start the movie. So it was bad. Yeah, Every time that, with the popcorn fire. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, you know, it starts out with like the, you know, the main screen stuff like that. We've seen in every Matrix movie. But where was your head at when you were watching is like after you got to that point before it turns into the Thomas Anderson stuff? Like, Well, going into it, I'd already heard that this was supposed to be like the anti-nostalgia Mm-hmm. not remake but sequel or whatever yeah because you know we we'd already from seeing the trailer and just what we'd heard we knew there would be some nostalgia s things plus being 18 years since the last one came out i'm sure they're going to throw some stuff in and i was yeah, watching it and i was fine. like they're recreating the opening scene to the first movie yeah and of course they change it up obviously so i was like all right well i don't know how this is anti-nostalgia <clears throat> i didn't feel like this was because i'd heard oh it's so revolutionary the way that they do this anti-nostalgia thing. I didn't get that from any of the movie, honestly. There was I see what they were saying, how they would take some things that you're familiar with and then change it up. But I mean, f- lots of movies have done that. I did not find yeah. anything like particularly special about how they did it in this movie. Um, in watching that scene when we see Trinity and the guys busting the door and all that, it's not like shot for shot, but it's really close. It uses those mm-hmm. nostalgia berries they're hanging there i was fine with it i was cool i don't mind nostalgia if it's done right i mean they they bust in with that i'm cool with them opening the movie that way it it got me to thinking okay i know they're doing this they're obviously going to change something something's going to happen and then when she gets caught and all that i'm like okay where's this going to go and uh bugs jessica Hemwick jumps in and does her little thing with them but uh, I was fine with it. I didn't mind it, but the scene ended and I didn't really take much from it. I just saw that, hey, she was watching a <laughs> a moment from the first movie play out and then she inter- you know, interjected in it and then we move on to the next scene. I was like, okay, I guess that's going to pay off later. Yeah, because it, it's a really interesting idea to have an agent kind of remember that they're Morpheus, which is, it's really strange. Like I have so many issues with how they handle Morpheus in this movie with Yaya Abdul-Mateen, who is a great working actor. I think he was great in Aquaman and stuff like that. But it feels like they're almost like when we find out what Neo is doing in this movie, or at least what he thinks he's doing, it feels like this is a bored man's video game creation that he's just building out of boredness. So he's having all these people come in. And I, it was it started getting really confusing, especially when Neo comes in, because you have Bugs and uh, is this is this where you've seen Bugs and uh, Morpheus end up at Neo's apartment, and then they're chased by agents. Which there's a lot of cool sequence when they go through the door and they're like upside down, Side, sideways, yeah. and that's that, that awesome. stuff to me is yeah, that's a pretty cool thing. But it leads to um jumping off the building into a Matrix style thing, which I thought was pretty cool. But I think the, the problem that I have with this sequence that becomes a problem to me is it just feels like there like there's something that needs to be there, that there's something that's you know that's being done where it's just being done for nostalgia's sake, that's trying to it's trying to say something that never fully gets explained. And then they try to do it with uh, Neil Patrick Harris's character, which we'll talk about. But it just it feels like the explanation to what exactly is going on here takes a video game to explain that neo this is where it gets all confusing for a lot of people like you know once they go through the matrix stuff and then neo is sitting at his computer and we see all the trinkets and stuff like that and we're being told that he's working on a video game but he also was a famous video game designer and everything's you know video game i'm like this feels like a a convoluted mess of storytelling to try to you know bat not really bash but kind of talk about our culture and society where we're doing what we're doing here we're talking through a computer and we play video games and we're completely nostalgic i mean look at spider-man no way home and the you know the the star wars trilogy and stuff like that that came out and we don't talk about those movies what's that Oh, we don't yeah, talk about yeah. those movies. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but Neo is basically us in a lot of respects. Yes, they're saying Jessica Henwick's bug is, is our eyes, but Neo is in a sense us because we need 
stimulation, we feel like sometimes we're out of place in the world. And I, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that kind of stuff. Like, you know, it, it's just to me personally, it's a really weird setup and kind of not really paid off very well, I guess. Well, the, the, I'm glad you mentioned the her and Morphe. I'd forgotten <laughs> about that part where after she gets uh, Trinity gets caught in, in that opening scene. Yeah. And, bugs runs off she does she get that's right morpheus follows yeah, her it's like oh for I whatever reason you. yeah and mm-hmm. then he starts remembering a one something else. red pill i got i want to say on that i was fine with that that's fine i was mm-hmm. wondering if we don't get an explanation as to why that is as of yet and we don't get any explanations really that we just see these things plant pan out and play out and that's fine uh because mm-hmm. i'm sitting there thinking to myself okay we're gonna find out why but my biggest question in that moment is why does morpheus look the way he does why does he not look like lawrence fishburne and this question, this issue resonates throughout the entire film for me because I did not, I know, and we'll get to why, but I didn't like their reasoning as to why Lawrence Fishburne wasn't back. And we're going to, I'm going to talk about Agent Smith real quick too, but I just, mm. I don't see why, I, I didn't have a problem with what they say Morpheus is now and why he is this thing. Did why, why did he have to look at, why couldn't he look like Lawrence Fishburne? And when in real world for a minute, you talk, they, interviews with Lawrence Fishburne because he is video of him from the original movies is in the movie but, yeah so I mean he would have had to have given his permission to feature him in that even though he was filmed for that movie in order for his likeness to be used at all he would have had to say yeah right so he's people are like why aren't you in the movie and everybody thought he was gonna make some like reveal later in the movie because he was just like I never got a call and I'm like why I don't understand why unless there was some type of beef or something I don't get it but um also Agent Smith I didn't mention this in my review because I didn't want to, I think mm-hmm. we all pretty much knew, but I didn't want to potentially spoil that Agent Smith is in this movie and he's yeah. played by a different actor. They had already told us about Morpheus, but I really, I get why he looked different because w- let me talk about what you said a second ago about where the video game stuff and all that, that part of the film that was convoluted. I didn't, I guess, okay, I can agree with you and say, yeah, that part may have been a bit, <clears throat> you say convoluted. And I guess that's one way, yeah, it could have been covered. I just thought it was overly long. This is one of the parts of the movie in my review I was talking about where I said they could have shaved some time off because I get what they're trying to um, and To me, they have him making this game based around the Matrix because, you know, as we find, they're trying to, of course, keep him complacent within the Matrix. They need him in the Matrix. But I'm I'm assuming that the events from the the other films were so impactful they would be unable to totally erase them from his mind so yeah. they put him here to where he can express that stuff and explore it but you know still have a reason as to why he's having these thoughts oh it's my imagination it's this game i've made i didn't really do these things you know and all that stuff mm-hmm. um so and i was cool with that i was fine with that idea and where it goes from there i just thought they sent an exuberant <laughs> amount of time on this whole video right. game thing that goes absolutely nowhere. Like this whole That's... video game angle just is eventually just totally drop. Yeah, because that's the problem. Like, I I'm gonna be fairly honest with you. The whole idea of using the Warner Brothers stuff, you know, as we talked about, Christina Ricci comes into the mix as a Warner Brothers exec. Yeah, I read today as I, we were waiting wait until we recorded. The inspiration for why this happened and why this is even in the movie is because Lily and Lana Wachowski, every single year, were constantly being confronted by Warner Brothers to make a movie. They refused because they were very much in their own headspace, which is fine. If they never made another movie in the Matrix franchise, I don't think we'd ever complain or ever say anything, whatever. And what ended up happening is Zach Penn, who wrote Incredible Hulk and stuff like that, was going to write a Matrix movie. And then they got canceled for whatever reason. And that's when Lana Wachowski finally came in. And so I get why this is in here. But sometimes their information, sometimes what they're doing in a movie, especially like The Matrix, is so much on the nose sometimes, especially the video game stuff. It almost feels like that they know video games are important because they worked in the video game space. That's, you know, the Matrix Online. But the problem becomes, and especially in that kind of stuff, like you said, is too long. They spend probably 10 minutes just doing a, we're going to map out what the next Matrix is. They have that really annoying fucking guy in that movie who, you know, introduces him to Tiffany or Trinity or whatever the fuck you want to call her name. And I'm like, dude, 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know what you <laughs> you know what you could have done? Chop all that shit out, have Neo kind of like what he was in the first movie, working on a program. Maybe he's a video game developer, maybe he has a contact as Christina Ricci or something like that, which Christina Ricci was in Speed Racer. I had no problems with her character in this movie. But get rid of all that shit. You can cut out 25 minutes of bullshit mm-hmm. with that particular section. And I think the movie would have been better. But this yes. is Lana Wachowski going, this is what Warner Brothers did to us. This is my response to him. Fuck you, Warner Brothers. Give me money. <laughs> Give me yeah. $150 million or whatever. So, yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. And we don't want to see that. And no. that was one of my big complaints of the film was that it was just, it's two and a half hours long. Mm. And while I did overall, I did enjoy the movie. And I liked some of the things that they did. I didn't like some of the things they did. But overall, I enjoyed it. It did not need to be two and a half hours long. They definitely could have cut out 20 to 30 minutes. And a lot of that 20 to 30 minutes is in that part when it's talking about this video game shit that, and I love video games, but yeah, it was just like, what is, okay, this is going to go somewhere. I have faith in these parts. While I'm watching it, I had faith that, okay, they're going to bring this back around. It's going to mean something. But it never does. No, it just no. it just stops. It goes into what the the actual story. I think you're right. They're kind of mm. they she got that out of her system of fuck you Warner Brothers. Yeah. And then she's like, okay, now let's tell the story, which is this love story between these two iconic characters. And I'm like, you should have started there. I mean, you you just just go right into that. I mean, just have the video. What happened was the video game thing that means absolutely nothing is on the forefront. Mm. And the actual story of the movie is in the background, and it should have been the other way around. Yeah, because the movie is another self awakening movie. It's definitely, as they say, a, a trans movie in a lot of aspects, which was the original trilogy. But sure. it's a movie about a man who saved a lot of people, did this peace situation. And there's a running thing in this about Neil Patrick Harris's character being an analyst, being the guy who's like the, the quack or whatever, and he's trying to keep neo in check or keep thomas anderson in check and everybody's you know under this system of control and stuff like that and then bugs and more piece comes in it was really to me personally when it was getting into the stuff about you know what is neo believing what is his overall arching story it wasn't until morpheus comes into the bathroom situation which uh, i was like whatever on that but <laughs> um he comes in and i'm like oh okay so i see where this is going but the stuff with like neo and the analyst and the blue pills which i thought you know made a lot of sense because he's taking the blue pill which is you know taking away from the rab hole stuff and then you see um Priyanka, like whatever the jones wife or whatever who plays sati in this movie and mm-hmm. um I just, I was starting to get a little kind of confused. I I know it's not as confusing as like the Matrix Reloaded, but I was getting a little confused on where exactly Lana and her screenwriters were trying to go with this. They're trying to make it, you know, is what's real, what's not. But it gets to a point where it makes you feel like you're out of place in the system. And like I said, it wasn't until the Morpheus and uh, Boggs comes in with the rooftop stuff that I really kind of, it started settling down. It still wasn't great to me, but... I mean, do you feel the same way? Do you feel it was coherent enough to you? I mean, I, I don't know. Like I said, a lot of it felt like so disjointed to me. I do uh, actually. That's that's a perfect point right there. I thought I liked the stuff in that first part we were talking about, where Bugs and Morpheus, you know, were like, mm-hmm. "Why does Morpheus look different? Why is he realize? Why is he an agent? Why is he realizing this stuff?" Yeah. And then it goes into the video game side of things, and we have this extended scene scenes of all that stuff. And then I, that's when the movie really started to take off was the rooftop and mm. they go through the door and onto the train and all that. I just wish we had gotten to that quicker. All that stuff that came before it could yeah, have been half condensed hour. down. Yeah. yeah, they could have condensed all that down because really nothing. There's some stuff that they needed. I get like they always seen this therapist, which is the analyst, Neil Patrick Harris. And, and they, they, they needed to show some of that. They needed to show some of his his uh, I guess not his boss is his boss or his partner the Agent Smith character um, who runs Activision or whatever it is yeah Warner's. um <laughs> and uh, Bobby Kotick but um <laughs> they needed to show that stuff to establish that character I was fine with that they needed to show that he was seeing Trinity out in the world and uh, that you know there was something there but man they could have condensed that down to ten minutes. All three of those 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 three points, they could have shown it. We could have gotten the exact same amount of stuff. 
in 10 minutes. And it would have been interesting because it would have been like, okay, we're building something. What's going on here? And then that rooftop scene is when things start. We start getting payoffs and explanations. But instead, we've just got this long extended period there. So I'm with you that up to that point, I was just kind of like, okay, I'm not like there were a few times I was like, I'm not bored yet, but if something doesn't happen here, I'm going to get bored. And thankfully, the rooftop scene came and uh, they yeah. go into all that. We start getting some explanations and depending on how you feel about those. But um, that's when things do start to pick up. And I did. I enjoyed the movie a lot more after that. Probably could have tightened it up a bit more after that in some parts. But that mm. is when we start getting some things of substance and it does start getting into what the, the movie's really about. <clears throat> yeah, because um, I'll point this out. I, I don't know if you remember um, Save Right Ryan when the when they're on Normandy and they, they get hit by the the blast or whatever, and they do that visual like slow motion effect, and they do that in here like almost like the red pill is like a LSD pill or something like that. Yeah. And I'm like that man, that got really annoying. I just had to bring that up. I really didn't like what what they did with that. I was like, this is really frustrating. Um, the thing about it, like I said, if you the Trinity and Neo stuff when they're talking in the coffee shop and you know him working on the video game is fine and you know saying like maybe he has an idea for the new matrix and i i thought that would have been a cool thing where you know i thought that was kind of cool where they pulled him in like maybe the computer became a a self-aware thing or something like that and that's the reason like i said the sky and everything around the san francisco where the movie takes place you know it looks it looks fake especially a little bit but it still is not green which i thought was fascinating but i hated that the can I throw that really? out there? I the hated that it didn't ballot? have it inside the matrix. And I was afraid that was going to happen, mm. that it didn't look like the matrix. Cause I mean, we all know that that's where he is. We know that that's what's happening. Yeah. Why t- that was such an iconic, like the movie, he's the movies had such an iconic look when they were in the matrix outside of the matrix was fine. But when they were in the matrix, you always knew you're in the matrix because it looks artificial even though it's real stuff. And I loved that look. That was such an iconic look. And we just do not get that here. And I mean, some people, I'm sure somebody will say, well, it's because it's a different matrix and all this and that, blah, blah. I don't care. I really liked that look of the yeah. matrix, of the, that that feel, the artificial look. And I didn't, I think I mentioned in my review, and like you said, there were some things that looked artificial, but the reason they looked artificial is because they were CG. So yeah, they looked artificial. Um, and I'm, I'm sure they were going out of their way in some parts to make it look a bit artificial, mm-hmm. but not in the way that really creative way that they did with the first films where it didn't look fake. It just looked, this doesn't make any sense, but it looked unreal, but yeah. it was real. And it had that unreal. green hue and everything. And that was such a good look. And they just, I know that they shot this movie in all natural lighting and all that and mm-hmm. took like a, a different approach to doing it or whatever and that's fine but just throw a green filter over that thing at least and give me some of that didn't get that at all exactly <laughs> yeah it um it's weird it really is it felt like they were trying to like throw a curveball at you and they didn't really work as well but you know this movie goes into he once he is kind of awoken it starts to get into the commentary and what's going <laughs> on about how it's been 60 years and you know, Neo is a, now considered almost like a god or a, a figure, Christ-like figure, in that sense of, like, he changed everything. And they're basically, at first, they're trying to give him the red pill and blue pill. And he's like, fuck that. I don't want any of this. And then he finally takes the red pill after everything is explained. And then it gets into, the, of course, the training battle sequence and stuff like that, which is fine and so on and so forth. But it leads to basically neo waking up and of course the harvesting fields but he's not really in the harvesting fields he's in his like own pod across from trinity which yeah. we kind of figured it was trinity even though they say we're not sure who it is i thought the that camera was cool. focused on it for a real long time for it to not be trinity <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly they're like hmm, I wonder, is that a woman no, I'm um <laughs> you know he wakes up he pulls himself out of course he's attached to the tubes and stuff like that and the idea that he comes back is not really a problem. It's just the whole explanation why he's coming back and how, you know, they're using him as kind of like um, a way to keep the system in check, I guess you can say, if you really want to think about it. You know, he's rescued, of course. Like, they pull all the things out of the really freaky. There's actually some really cool imagery, like, they show later on about how he was 
reinserted back into the rebooted matrix with his like eyes burned and you know they're like choking up his fucking chest and shit it's, it's actually yeah. quite uh, visceral um but he's rescued by uh, i want to say uh baymax's brother or something like that <laughs> i don't know what it is um actually it's a particular character but he's brought back to what it looks like actually if you look at the we had the um what's the name of their of morpheus's ship it was um the um oh shit if you hadn't said it i could have yeah uh, it's like the neo the neck neck or mom or whatever um oh it's right there on the tip of my tongue it is nebuchadnezzar nebuchadnezzar yeah nebuchadnezzar right. um but their ship actually looks kind of like um a, like a like a lobster a little bit yeah, like the tail, the tail the back the tail spins. goes in yeah. all that <laughs> It looks yeah, it looks kind of like the machines, kind of how their tentacles work. And they rescue him, they bring him back there, and we see now he has this like weird contraption in the back that they hook. You know, he has the thing in the back of his head. Now he has a weird contraption. He basically is just used to this now, so he wakes up and they actually do the thing. I think is probably one of the cooler moments in the movie. Like I said, I did not like this movie, but the cooler moment in the movie is with the fight sequence between Morpheus and uh, Thomas to save Tom, save Neo from dying. So they have yeah. him trying, you know, they're, he's basically beating the hell out of him to get him to use his force like abilities. And so once again, like, did you, were you like starting to get on board at that point? Cause me personally, that stuff is just like, it's cool visually. It's stunning. It gives, it's, it has a lot more depth to it. We see the, the harvesting fields and stuff like that. They're still there. And you know, how did you feel about it? Well, I mean, I was already, I was on board. I mean, I had, I had had issue. There was a period of time there, like I said a few minutes earlier before this, I was like, okay, "Come on!" But then you know the whole train sequence and all that happened, and <clears throat> I was I was invested at that point. I was like, "Okay, cool." And we went back there. I was like, "All right, we're calling back to the original fight." And I got what he was doing and all that. And I liked that scene. Once again, wasn't blown away, but I was enjoying it. Um, and then of course Neo does his his force push, which that that brings me to one of the issues i know i had it in my notes but i can't remember if i mentioned it in my review neo doesn't neo very much in this movie he no he just he just force but yeah force pushes bullets and shit that's pretty much all he does he does that but he doesn't i mean they have the 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 funny scene towards the end Mm -hmm. where they're like can you still fly and he (laughs) no yeah Um, but, but i mean beyond that he doesn't he just does force pushes and there's a couple of scenes like one or two scenes where he'll fight for a minute but it's just he doesn't neo very much he's just this guy and i mean i get that he's supposed to be coming back in touch with who he is but by that point but at some point he never does he never does like get and i guess until maybe the very 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 end of the movie like literally the last shot of the movie he kind of does but he does and i didn't need him flying around like superman i'm cool with that but he just doesn't have that same like this is a god like he is the one you know in in the first movie they set it up and i believed <clears throat> and, and and even in the subsequent films after that i believed yeah this guy he he's a step above everybody else he's the one and uh and this one i just he force pushes that's that's about it he learns that yeah that he levels up at that one part with uh morpheus and you know he doesn't ever use any more of his uh experience points to get to get anything else for in the movie until the very 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 end um and i just i thought that was a little disappointing to me honestly as i was hoping he would neo a bit more and maybe the reason he didn't was something i know you had an issue with in the film that we find out later on we'll talk about it in a minute but i wish he had done more than that but up to that point yeah i was i was liking it i was invested i liked that scene it was you know it was kind of one of those oh yeah finally we know it's coming i mean he's yeah. pushing him pushing him pushing him until he breaks and rah, blows everything up and you're like okay cool <laughs> now will say at that point i was like hell yeah okay neo's back but but not so much but <laughs> but yeah well, i was liking it up to that point that's the thing like they they go to the matrix we see like the tv <clears> stuff I, I i did love the uh the uh the morpheus had like his like cool 70s chairs and stuff like that. i think he had like a he was holding on to a, like a martini like through most of the that sequence and stuff like that yeah. but the, the thing about this movie that really pissed me off really made me mad is they go back to ion not zion ion which is yeah. now this like uh place that has like clouds and shit or whatever and we are introduced to once again to jada pinkett smith's niobe character and I'm going to be straight honest with you, this sequence and then the subsequent sequences after it 
are some of the most baffling decisions in this movie I've ever seen in my entire life. I get that they have a home base. They could go back to home base. I like seeing Jay Pickens Smith in this movie because it you know gives a little bit of nostalgia points or whatever. But it, my God, is it is some of the most infuriating. We're gonna be we're we're not learning from our past experience. We're stupid. We're boring. We learned that, of course, that Morpheus is a computer program, I guess, that has memories of Morpheus. So now they have nanobot technology. Nanotechnology. That, you know, can, <laughs> yeah, that can live in this world, which I, I, it's fine for whatever it is. I don't really give a shit. It's what it is. So I was already kind of getting annoyed. But the whole stuff with Niobe, the whole stuff with her character arc, the whole idea of just the talking and exposition and just boring ass nature of that whole sequence. Cut that shit out of the movie. Bring it yeah. down to two hours and five minutes. Fuck her. Not fuck her literally, <laughs> but fuck the character. I don't need to see it. I don't need to see any of this garbage. And I was just like, why is this in the movie? I know why it's doing it because they need to explain Ion. They need to explain what they've done in the past 60 years. The fact that she's like, oh, I don't believe in you, but I believe in you now. I don't care. It, it actually <laughs> took me so out of the movie. But I was starting to fall asleep because I was just so bored by it. You might, you probably liked it more than I did, but I'm just like, this mm. fucking sucks, man. Well, maybe you didn't. I, mean, I appreciate if you didn't, but uh, I'm like, this sucks because it just completely just stops the movie and dead in its tracks. We had the cool action sequence. We saw the, the fields. We saw them on the new ship or whatever. Then they eventually go and they have, I, I, when they got back to the fighting, I'm like, thank God. And then they go back to Iron. I'm like, stop doing this. I'm like, <laughs> I was so frustrated. I'm like, the people in my people in back of me actually left the theater after the sequence because they're like, "Fuck this, we're out," and I don't blame them because I was just I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, "I need to leave," but then I realized I got to review it. I got to be an honest reviewer because that's just who I am. And what did you think? I, I'm gonna stop well, ranting. It really <laughs> did piss me off. Oh no, I couldn't tell. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> no, the okay. So this is another one of those scenes. Mm. Um, in the the other part of the movie that um i was referring to much like the video game stuff where i was like cut some of this back man and <laughs> it's i hearken i hearken back to the first film okay i look at it like maybe they're trying to set up i didn't mind ion and why it exists and why zion doesn't yeah the work. concept's fine i have no problem with the yeah. concept it's just what the execution yeah the execution and the amount of time we spent there I'm going to say in the first, okay in the second movie mm -hmm. they spend all that time in Zion and that is one of the parts of the movie that a lot of people are like why just yeah. get it moving and there's even you can find fan edits of that movie called the D Zion editions <laughs> and stuff where they pretty much remove most of the Zion stuff from the movie mm -hmm. and it's a better edit it moves better it flows better I feel like there's going to be that in this, the D the D I on and video game portion of the movie and it'll make the movie better. But it, I hearken back to the first movie. they say what Zion is. They talk about Zion. They explain to us what it is, but we never see it. And we, we understand we didn't need, I mean, really, they didn't even need to go there. I'm okay with them having gone there. I'm yeah. not okay with the ridiculous amount of time that they spent there. You said cut it down to two hours and five minutes. I'm honestly saying this could have been an hour and 50 minute long movie if they had cut out a lot of that ion stuff. I didn't know yeah. that they went there was fine. They got to have, like you said, they got to have a home base. It makes sense. Um, so I don't mind them going there. And I don't mind them having Jada Pickett Smith show up, but she didn't need to have such a predominant role. They yeah. didn't need to be in ion the two times. I think it was two times they were there the amount of time that they were because nothing's happening. And that's where this movie trips itself up is during those first, the, the video game portion of the movie and the, the f f end of the first third. And during these ion parts, the movie works good when it's explaining things, it's giving a story, it's moving things forward mm. and giving us the scenes that we love from the matrix. When it slows down and it's like, Okay, let's take a breather, guys. Let's sit around and around the campfire and sing Kumbaya and like have nothing to do. We're not moving forward really <laughs> at all. That's when the movie really drags. And those were the yep. parts of the movie that held it back from being as great as I feel like it could have been. I liked the movie that was here. I just feel like there's other some other crap in there that they could have just scrubbed. And sh like I said, they could have taken 
30 minutes out of this movie between those these two areas and it would have been a such a better film so i'm with you on the the ion stuff it did nothing yeah. for me i didn't really gain much from it he went there we saw okay sure we saw jada pickett smith that was great we understand that you know they that's when they explained i think that it's actually like 60 years later and we get to see her that she's old he's not as old yeah that made sense i was cool with that we learn what morpheus is which we could have learned anywhere and all the other shit I mean, besides, it shows that we're working with the robots, but they had already seen that on the ship. He'd already seen that we are working with some of the robots on the ship. So I don't really understand what we gained. He shows up and he gets arrested. I'm like, you don't arrest Jesus. You can't do that. <laughs> you know? I mean, what, what are you doing? Yeah. And it doesn't, she even says, I hate to do this. I don't want to do this. This goes against everything I believe, but I'm going to do it. Like, I'm in charge. I don't have to do it, but nah. it's going to happen. Why? And, and then as soon as he's arrested, he's put up there and he's looking out over the city like Anakin Skywalker and Coruscant. He's just like, okay, <laughs> let's break out. We had this yeah. massive fucking squid ship show up and right in front of you and you're going to get, I don't, I don't know, that, that I was not into the Ion stuff and it was just a waste of fucking time, honestly. Um, well, and that's, that was, yeah, I didn't like no, it. God. Yeah, no, I would say that that's my main issue with it. There's so many sequences in this movie that do this where, okay, so we'll go, we'll continue on to just kind of push the story forward. You know, they decide they're going to go back into the Matrix because the story is ultimately about Neo trying to get Trinity out of the system, you know, to be whatever. And we find out, I, I don't like where the character ends up going, but um, <laughs> they go into the Matrix and this is where he goes into the because she talks about how she loves motorcycles and stuff like that. So the, she he goes into the shop and he's there, and all of a sudden she like disintegrates or whatever. And we see that it's the analyst and the Neil Patrick Harris character, and that's when the bullet time stuff happens. And once again, that sequence could have been shortened, but goes on for like almost ten minutes. It's not really ten minutes, but it feels like ten minutes, where he's explaining about how he rebooted the system, how. This is where we actually get the very visceral stuff about how they were reintroduced back in the Matrix, Neo and Trinity. I thought that stuff was pretty awesome, but I love the visceral yeah. kind of nature of the, what they can do. And he just goes on and on and on. And he becomes a very comic booky, cartoon style villain where he has like all these people around him. And he's talking about he pulls the gun and sh or he has handsome Chad, which I think is Chad Stahelski's character. Point the gun and shoot it towards Trinity. It's going slowly. It's cool stuff. But once again, you're you're slowing down the movie to do more exposition when you could just kind of tighten it up, slow, like make it a little more evenly paced. But it just kind of goes on because it just want to be. It happens later in the movie too, but not as to a fuller effect. But it just that that's this movie. There's just so much exposition that's needing to be thrown out when we know what the Matrix is. You don't have to keep it. This is not you know, a movie that we've never seen before. We know what the Matrix is. All you have to say is this is a rebooted Matrix and this and this and this. You don't have to get into the nuts and bolts of what this world is. You just have to go, I rebooted the Matrix because I paid a lot of money. I'm like, where, where are you paying money from? Like, is it virtual money? Is this yeah. cryptocurrency? <laughs> what the hell is going yeah. on? It's Dogecoins. Um, exactly. Yeah, the, the, nobody who's watching this movie has not seen the mm. original Matrix, at least yeah. the first one, if not all three. You're not going to get somebody who's going to go and walk into this movie who doesn't know what the matrix is who needs it explained everybody yeah. who's watching this movie has seen the other movie so i don't know why they needed that but i agree i, d I didn't mind that as much as some of the compared to the other stuff but um yeah, it's not the worst i, I would but i would agree that it was a bit too much explanation there or exposition mm -hmm. and that's when um they fail at re recovering trinity fine whatever and then they go back to ion and this is where we're introduced to the fucking uh sati character who looks like an alien from the abyss and <laughs> and they develop they develop a, a scenario where they're going to rescue trinity by going back to the harvesting fields in a really strange way of doing it which you know i understand 60 years later and technology has changed for these people but the way they're doing everything is really just kind of weird and kind of I, I i guess maybe i was falling under the the idea that they're they figure out a way to transfer somebody out yeah, of the pod confusing. without killing them and then they can put bugs into the to the system to be trinity that's when she does her scream 
and this is where Neil Patrick Harris comes in the mix at the very end and stuff like that. And, and like I said, the Sati stuff is fine because it brings back from the Matrix Revolutions the young girl and stuff like that. I thought that was perfectly well done. I thought that was you know a little emotional because you know that that was the one bright spot of the entire Revolutions movie was that whole inside the sequence with the and they talk train about the station. protein and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, the train station was a train conductor and it was it was a really weird segment it kind of leads into the the conclusion of the movie with the motorcycle stuff and do you think it was a a plan that fits into this like in, in a fictional thought level do you think it's a plan that kind of works do you think it's something that's really weirdly paced for a matrix movie like where did you, where do you sit on that because it was just like I, I don't know it just felt like at this point where i just was really kind of off put by what was going on i don't know it's really i was really bothered by it I guess the bug stuff about her having to like simultaneously jack in to Trinity and all that. I'm I'm glad you mentioned that. I, that was a weird scene because the Mm. way that they laid it out, it seemed like, you know, as we know, you can't just pull somebody out of the matrix forcibly because they'll, they'll die. You're separating them from their consciousness. So they were going to put the way I took it when they were explaining it was that they were going to use, her vessel they're going to kind of mm-hmm. switch consciousnesses and bodies so that they could get trinity out conscious wise at least long enough to say hey here's what's going to wake up you know and yeah, then, yeah, yeah you know switch back but i'm not 100 percent sure what happened there because that they explained it, it never really fully it never really fully works it doesn't like they don't yeah. really ever switch for long enough i don't know they didn't really i, I what the what how I took it was not how it went down. It kind of did, mm-hmm. but then it just, it's like they set up this big complex like thing, how they're going to like switch minds at the same time and all this and that. And I'm like, okay, I'm cool with that. I get it. I get it. You know, you're staying in line with, you can't just pull somebody out. Yeah. It's kind of a bypass thing. And then like random, this stuff happens in really quick success succession. And then they're just both out. And I'm like, wait, wouldn't it, shouldn't the bugs characters like physically still be there? And or 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 one of their consciousnesses be switched or I don't know. They touch hands and everything's cool. And I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) And it just and the movie at this point, the movie decides, hey, we're not going to drag ass. We're going to move it a million miles a minute. So it's kind of like, oh, what other? Okay, moving on. And you forget about it. (laughs) Well, you have like, yeah, exactly. You have like the Sentinels are really stupid in this movie, not on the sense that they're like. They're being under control of Neil Patrick Harris's character. They never really spot the Morpheus or Bugs or any of these characters. Somehow, they're robot. They're, uh, I don't know, android, whatever this thing is that they're flying around in, is never really questioned by the, the Sentinels in the movies. Has some kind of um, omniscient, omnipotent, not omniscient. Like they were, they were physically aware of what was going on. They don't feel like that in this movie and. You know, they talk about how the people can no longer, they don't have to turn into agents anymore, which I'll be fairly honest, agents don't really do anything in this movie. They're really kind of, mm-hmm. they're like the in the Reloading Revolutions where Agent Smith was the only really like probably predominant agent. He's not even an agent in those movies. And then you have the people now are just, they just get taken over kind of like uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers or something where their form is still there and you know, a lot of people, a lot of people die in the movie, which is really unnecessary. I, I don't know, but yeah, they just, in the it's originals, really weird. in the originals, the whole reason that the agents had to take over was because you can't. I don't know. It was weird because in the first one, it makes it seem as if like something, a sentient being, can't inhabit the matrix without having, you know, a, a being attached to some type of physical form. Yeah, and that's why the agents always have to temporarily take over a human being. But then, of course, in the second one, you have like the Oracle and things like that and and the architect but they're kind of explained away as being like well they're special cases they're Mm -hmm. you know they're kind of the forefathers of of the actual matrix so it makes sense as to why okay they're they're special cases they're not they're not like everybody else not all programs can be as special as they are in this one it's just like hey we don't now we swarm swarm mode (laughs) <laughs> yeah, which just pur- which just purge everything that we remember from the original Matrix movie, except for the Merovingian. We're just gonna bring him back yeah. as a bump for no no reason. No that, reason that bothered me because he like showed yeah. up. I was like, okay, we're in for some like crazy out there over convoluted exposition about absolutely nothing, and then something cool will happen. But we don't even get that. He just shows up and spouts off a bunch of shit, and they're like, oh, it's this guy, and they get in a fight, <laughs> and then he yells some more stuff and disappears. And I'm like, yeah why was it's, he there? um 
It's a no, cool it's fight. Just weird that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. It's the thing that really is funny is like I do I do think the idea of having Trinity have a ki- have kids and a family makes for the concept of keeping them two apart because like once they touch they become like glowing objects and blow up everything and what that was a cool and, scene. I liked yeah. that. That gave me the kind of like hell yeah here it comes when they touched and or no right before they touched and uh the yeah she's being pulled away grabs her yeah and she like comes she awakens i guess fully and she I, turns around and she's like I hate that I'm fucking about to, name yeah she's like i'm about to fuck you up you're like hell yeah she's back <laughs> and then you know they have some cool scenes after that but it never and that's what i was talking about earlier with like their set pieces that was awesome what we needed right mm-hmm. after that was just a kick-ass awesome scene and we got a a cool scene and i was like it just wasn't yeah it was there but the payoff just wasn't quite enough i mean it was fine it was fun it the, but it was just not what i was wanting it had the reloaded syndrome where the ending just kind of it's cool but it's not they blew their load on the freeway sequence so it kind of yeah it's fine it's fine for what it is but um yeah once they touch they all of a sudden like blow up everything neil patrick harris is going on his tirade there's a bunch of cops and he's like you know some kind of gangster or syndicate mob boss or whatever <laughs> and i do love when they do i did love when they do the bullet time stuff again he's going on explanation all of a sudden agent smith or jonathan groth's character just comes walking by he's like you know we're, we have a lot of we have a lot in common with the two and you realize neil patrick harris is like oh shit i guess there's no white castle around i guess i'm <laughs> and um he uh you know he sees the cat the cat is interesting because it's called um uh, deja what vu. Is called? yeah deja yeah. vu which i thought was kind of funny but like you like you said the thing the thing that i had the most problem with when trinity is reveal or trinity remembers who she is taking out the matrix all that stuff is just really weird there's something anticlimactic about the motorcycle sequence where it's cool but it just feels like they're driving around people are falling out of buildings things are exploding but there's no semblance of like real awe inspiring action to if that makes any sense it just feels like it feels like a sequence that you would see in the middle of another movie that this is supposed to be the the huge gigantic moment that is like going to pay off this whole entire movie and it really leads up to the sequence on the building where they decide they're going to jump off the building which is they did that in real life apparently they jumped 40 feet 40 stories or whatever off a building which that's some balls you have to have right there you know after that's some tom cruise balls you have to have there but you know (laughs) But, you know, Keanu Reeves is doing his, like, missile here, explode here, you know, stop the bullets, and they finally decide to jump because they're going to get out of this nonsense. And I just never feel like it landed to me personally. I felt like it was very small in nature, and that's not what the Matrix is. I mean, Matrix Revolutions was very bombastic, but it felt very grand in scope when it, what it was trying mm-hmm. to do. Whether it failed or not, that's then on what you feel like. But this didn't feel grand at all. It just felt like it was... Do uh, you get what I mean by that? It just felt small. Like it yes. didn't feel impactful. I absolutely do. And before I jump into that, I wanted to make one yeah, yeah. more point uh, concerning Agent Smith. Mm-hmm. I really, like I said earlier on, I understand why Agent Smith looks different because if they're trying to kind of keep him complacent, but keep him in a, give him an outlet for these memories he has, I get yeah. why they wouldn't have Hugo Weaving being Agent Smith because that might be a bit too much. But man, they missed a golden opportunity. And Hugo Weaving said, I'm willing to come back. But yeah. like Lawrence Fishburne, they just didn't bring him back. At the point when he actually realizes, because he's kind of under control too, but the point where he realizes that he is Agent Smith, or maybe even the end when he shows up, that may have been a little bit bigger. One of those two points, that is when I feel like they could have, like, he could have shed the skin and become Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving could have stepped in. That would have been like a ah, like an Andrew Garfield and Tobey <laughs> Maguire walking in. Moment. Exactly, exactly. And that and that would have worked because that's who he is. And mm. I just realized really who I am. And now I'm going to go back to you know this is the view. This is who I think I. It just would have that would have worked, and it would have worked on a nostalgic level. It would have worked on a story level, and it would have worked I on a hype level. It. Yeah, it would have worked on a yeah. hype level. <laughs> Um, but all that aside, okay, so the end, we got this scene, it's going on, the motorcycle and all that, said it didn't seem as grand, which no, it didn't, there's lots of shit going on, blowing up and Yeah, and which is that. weird, it should be, yeah, it's very weird. But it didn't, one of the things is it didn't have stakes, 
not once yeah. in that scene was I afraid that they weren't going to make it on this motorcycle. Yeah. Because at this point, he's like doing his force pushing all over the place. And there were no stakes. They get up to the top of the building and, you know, they have their talk. I was cool with that. That stuff I was fine with. Mm. They get up there and they're shooting at him. He's like, ah, and like throwing <laughs> missiles. And then they decide to jump off, which is very, um, and that calls back to the the extended universe, like with the Animatrix with the kid who was in yeah, 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 right. Revolutions where that's how he got out. He forced himself out. He was one of the only people to not ever not be pulled out of the matrix he got out himself by jumping and mm -hmm. believing and exiting himself so I, i'm assuming that's what they did with her maybe that's right. why they didn't need bugs anymore i don't know but it didn't i i i i like i didn't hate it <laughs> i didn't hate what was happening but like i said about that the fight a moment ago it just it didn't have that big bombastic moment or thing to it that the other ones did. And like you said, the other ones were all, regardless if you love them or hate them, they were all grand in scale and in nature. They seemed really big. And I did mention this too in my review. This one, for better or worse, is a much smaller story. Now, mm -hmm. I like that. I like it, but it takes some getting used to because this one's all about them. It's all about Neo and Trinity. That's the basic story of them getting back together. You've got all this other stuff that's starting to pop off and go on in this world with the, the analyst and how the robots or the machines were attacking each other. And now the war is maybe getting started back up and the ion and blah, blah, blah. All this shit that they set up. But none of it matters. The only thing that matters to this story is these two. I mean, anytime Neo is involved and they're talking about all this other bullshit, you notice he doesn't give a shit. He's just like, where's yeah. Trinity? Where's Trinity? Where's Trinity? Everything is Trinity, Trinity, Trinity. And that he's very single minded. And we are following him. So this story was in a big world, but it was a small story. And that made the whole thing seem not as grand. I think once yeah. I noticed that and I went into it understanding this is a side mission, <laughs> it's an important one in this big world, I was mm. okay with it. I was like, it was a bit disappointing. I will admit that it just, it did seem, and probably because we had 18 years to wait and we wanted this big return. This is a band of menace all over again. Yeah. <laughs> it was a smaller scale though. It was just a smaller yeah. scale story within this big world. And maybe it's because in this world we have seen in the past and we see with this world they created here that there is a lot more that could be happening, a lot more stuff. And they definitely could have made some different decisions on some things that they did. But I was okay with the smaller kind of streamlined story, even though they had some shit that wasn't needed with like the, the Ion and, and video game stuff. I was okay with this more streamlined, smaller story within this bigger world, especially if they do move on and do something else to where maybe now that these two are together, they can have those that grander story this could be one yeah. of those movies that we look back on if they do move on and do a grander story from here that is just all that kick-ass stuff we're talking about. We may look back at this movie with a different set of eyes, with, with more fondness and say, okay, right. that was that small beginning that bloomed into something bigger. But right now we don't have that something bigger, so it's kind of, okay, I was wanting more, didn't quite get that. Well, that's the thing about when you go back to stakes, the thing that works about it with the well in the Matrix movie is we know what happens now. In the Matrix, there is a point where Neo is fighting Smith and the Sentinels have kind of locked on to Neo's character. And you are not entirely sure how this movie is going to play out. And then he gets shot and killed mm -hmm. and that whole sequence. Then he kind of rises up. But like that whole segment, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to survive. You don't know who's going to die. You're actually worried about this. It gets to a point where the Sentinels get into the Nebuchadnezzar. And I don't feel like that happens here. I, I Like you said, it feels like they're going to live, like they've become God status to the point where they're just going to survive everything. And that's my true worry if they do go into five and six is there's no going to be no true stakes in this whole entire franchise. But the thing that kind of really made me bog my mind a little bit boggled. And you can, if you need to interrupt, just let me know. Um, once they jump out the building, Trinity capture or catches Neo and she's flying. So they uh -huh. flip the script in essence to now she's the one, which is becoming a problem in movies where 
there's story and the characters are being flipped to make the world more pc i love that neo is still the one but now you have trinity the one and i made a joke last night that this movie did you said now they're the two and i said this movie took a number two on my my heart (laughs) and uh um and then now she can fly now she has special powers and they fly back to the analyst's house which is now a huge rubble a mess and they bring back deja vu the cat and then they fly off and then they do one of the worst renditions of awake i think it's called awake from rise against machine rage against machine they do uh, as the end credits song did you notice that it's very similar to wake up or is it uh, wake up yeah, yeah i yeah, think it's the same rise, song isn't it rage against i don't think if it was it was like a different it was somebody else doing it it was very mm-hmm. reminiscent of that song it may have been the same song just somebody else singing it and that's why i didn't pick up yeah rage is very has a very distinct sound, but mm. that's how they ended the first movie, of course. And this one ended in a very similar fashion. I just think that they either it was a different rendition by somebody else, or it was a song that was very similar in nature. Not as cool, yeah. though. <laughs> no, if uh, that that was like uh, what made the what made that like the soundtrack for the Matrix is one of my favorite soundtracks of all time, just because that was like Rob Zombie and before Marilyn Manson became an asshole, uh, had Marilyn Manson <laughs> and Prod- I think I had Prodigy. Did it prodigy or something like that and it had you know of course if it didn't it machine. should have yeah exactly <laughs> uh one of the, actually one of the best re redos or remake songs or when they like revamp it or whatever is in the sequel reloaded with dave matthew's band when they do one of their songs and they make it a different it's like a remix or whatever it is and it's really cool but they've always had great soundtracks and i think the score here was all right but oh on the score well yeah i agree i think it was all right it does not compare to no uh i mean the first one had a great score the second Mm -hmm. one though the score in the second movie is fucking awesome and amazing it is yeah mona lisa overdrive which is the song that they play predominantly over the uh uh freeway chase Mm-hmm. It's one of the most, still this day, one of the most heart pounding, awesome scenes. You listen to that in the car, and you're just going to want to speed and pull out into traffic. <laughs> <laughs> jump on top of the truck and just start, yeah. you know, using the samurai sword and shit. You yeah, want to yeah, jump yeah. on a Ducati and drive into opposite direction traffic <laughs> and die. <laughs> uh, exactly. Um, but I, I got to ask you, did you have a problem with the ending at all with her being now another one? Like, it feels like they're trying to shoehorn in a society where everybody has to be equal i'm not trying to be that person but it just felt like a little shoehorned in little i'll be bit. that person um yeah, okay. okay so they had explained up to that point that neo is the one but the only reason he works is because of trinity without trinity he is not the one and the way the reason they've got them put back in there is because without the one the matrix doesn't work the matrix doesn't work so yeah. that's why they resurrected him but then they found with just him it didn't work he had to have his other component which was trinity true love all that stuff love saves everything so but he couldn't have them together because if they're together they're too strong and they would wake up so he had to keep them close enough but far enough apart to where they got what they needed from from them to make the matrix work so I was fine with her having one powers and all that. That's where they went with it. Okay, I was cool with that. I'm fine with that. That means in later films, if we get them, we're going to have two badasses. Okay, cool. She was always kind of a badass, but that's fine. Um, when they jump off the building and they go to fall and she grabs him and she's flying and he's like, I'm not doing this. For a moment, for that moment, I was like, oh, fuck. Because I thought that that's what they were doing was suddenly she was going to be the one he's underpowered and like you said we're going into this whole pc culture thing that we got going on nowadays and i that's not what those movies were back in the day the points that they made were subtle enough that made them more impactful they weren't in your face and i was like oh shit yeah, you i guys mean they're fucking it up right here at the end they're like the movies are really progressive like they're progressive as hell yeah. so there's yeah it's but yeah, this one's like way in your face. Oh my god, it was so in your face what they were doing. It was well, yeah, it was. But then in I guess the next scene, I'm pretty sure yeah, it was the very next scene. They both come up flying up and do all that, and that made it better for me. Well, yeah, I didn't. I mean, I didn't love that because it did for just a moment. I was like, oh shit! Now they're gonna say he's not the one, she's the one, and. The, but that's not what they did. The next scene, they both fly up. They're both equally powered, all that. And I was cool with that. I was fine with that. F- f- sure. Fine. Mm-hmm. 
I'm good with that. It made up for that scene. But I, I, I'm with you. When he fell and she caught him and she's flying around and all of a sudden she's got these one powers out of nowhere and he ain't got shit. I was like, that's what we're doing. But then since they made up for it in the next scene and they both, you know, were powered up and all that, I was fine with it at that point. I was like, okay, they're not making it a point to where he's like underpowered and she's more powered than him. Okay, yeah. I'm cool with it at that point. But I do agree. I'm with you when that first happened that was exactly as soon as i saw that she grabbed him and he's like oh mm. i was like fuck <laughs> so, <laughs> but they made it they, I mean, like uh, i said it came they came back from it and i was like okay okay cool uh, i can live with that i'm cool with that yeah i mean like the jumping off the building that sh that was awesome i have to admit doing that real doing that real you know with wire work or whatever it was cool but um before since we've been talking for a while you know i kind of want to do a wrap up on this but do you see this movie getting a sequel do you if you saw a sequel would you expect them to follow the same trajectory that the certain other sequel trilogy did or uh -huh. do you feel that they're i mean we're, i won't say the name because it's now uh is now stricken from the record uh uh -huh. but do you see this do you see this going into nostalgia heavy territory or do you think if they were to do a sequel that it would do something different. Like, how do you like to me personally? I think they could do that and make it much better, but I worry that Warner Brothers are like, oh, no, no, we want you to make it as nostalgia as possible. I mean, how do you feel about that? Honestly, I think if I wouldn't be surprised if it gets a sequel, I mean, the movie technically doesn't come out until tomorrow. So, yeah, I mean, we have no idea how it's going to do financially. If it got a sequel, I wouldn't be surprised. If it didn't get a sequel, I wouldn't be surprised because I think it's people are pretty divisive on it right now mm -hmm. but it all depends on how much money it makes obviously and how what, what the word of mouth is on it i wouldn't mind seeing a sequel if if they did a couple of things first of all i want them to be go back to that grand nature of the originals i'm cool with this being a smaller story if it feeds into a bigger down the road being the next movie i don't need another small story my problem is, is what what does that mean what are they going to do if they make a sequel do I think they'll go into nostalgia bait again? I don't think so. I, I think that they would. I think that they got all, a lot of that out of their system with this one. And I think that they would say, you know, if you want us to go forward with the sequel, we're going to do it our way. And I think that they would just tell a story. My, my issue is, is what would that story be? Are they just going to tell kind of sort of the same story that they did with the, the first three movies? Because at that point, no, I don't think we need a sequel. I've seen that story. I don't need it again. I don't need a, a, a member very berry version of it. I just, I want something new. If they have a new idea and they have something neat and cool that could lead to some cool set pieces and just, just an interesting story, they got somewhere else to go. In other words, if they have a story to tell that they want to tell or one of them wants to tell or both, then I think, yeah, absolutely. I hope they do. I'd love to see some more of that creativity from the originals show back up and, and just more of that world. But <clears throat> if if that's not the case, if they don't want to tell a story, if there's not a story eating away at them that they just got to get out, no, just leave it alone. Leave it where it's at. I mean, I think James Cameron said it, pretty more or less said it, when he comes to any of his sequels. So it took so long to make Terminator 2 and uh, even Avatar and things like that. He's always said, you know, I, people have been asking him for a sequel to like True Lies and uh, some of his other movies for, for years. And he's like, I don't have that story. There's not a story I want to tell. I told that story. Um, I appreciate that people want more of it, and that's great, but I, if the story's not there for me to tell, I'm not going to tell it because that's disingenuous and it's not what the fans want. Everybody says they want a sequel, yeah. but if I don't have a sequel to tell, if I don't have a story that I want to tell, then it's not worth that's that's not good that's not what you guys really want i'm not giving you what you want and i'm not gonna do that so i hope right. they go that route i mean they've held out for 18 years getting asked every year probably multiple times so i'm hoping that either a she got it out of her system and now she's like eh, i don't have anything else to tell or maybe doing this said man i've got all kinds of great ideas that popped off here hopefully lily gets on board too because i'm afraid that she was the more creative side as far as like story-wise narrative and stuff goes and maybe we get some more great Matrix sequels that, like I said a minute ago, we look back at this one and say, yeah, that one's better than the original was. Because think back to Empire Strikes Back. I know we said we weren't going to talk about that series. But let's talk about Empire Strikes Back for a minute. When it first came out, critics hated it. They said it was awful. Yep. 
Like, yep, what is yep. this shit? And then when the trilogy was done, it's now considered one of, if not a lot of people say the best Star Wars movie ever. But it got bashed all to hell when it first came out because it was such a it it it, it didn't give people what they thought that they were wanting. It was setting up something greater, which nowadays everything is setting up something else. So I mean, I don't know how I feel about that, but we'll just see what the future holds. So do I think it'll get a, uh, a, a sequel? Maybe. <laughs> I really I don't know. It depends on it. if it makes money or not. If it makes money, yes. Yeah. If not, no. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. It's all money, 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 and how people receive it. And like I said, there was there was some clapping in the theater, but it wasn't like you know after leaving the Matrix. Actually, there was somebody tweeted to me one time, <laughs> or somebody tweeted like man i wish i could have been there to see the matrix in theater i'm like i was in the theater by myself you know on a thursday or friday afternoon and it was like one of the best experiences of my life and you know i will you know even though i don't like this movie and you know you you're you know has some you know stuff that you didn't like about it as well which i you know appreciate because you you can look at, look at both sides I will until it gets to the point where it gets ridiculous and bad and just horrifying. I will always look forward to the next Matrix because it just holds a special, special place in your heart. You know, even with those other two movies, I remember how excited I was for them, and for better or worse, you know, I will always be excited for another Matrix as long as uh, what's his face who uh, you know you ball you ball doesn't make a Matrix movie or some oh, shit. No. But, <laughs> yeah, which might actually be quite incredible if we think about it, but, yeah, but that, that would definitely be an interesting film. Um, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing the first Matrix in theaters. I saw it. Um, I don't see movies in theaters multiple times very often. I watch them at home. Yeah, I usually see a movie in theaters once, and then if I really like it, I'll see it at home too. But I saw the Matrix three times in theaters. The first time I was wow. just so blown away and just like <laughs> glued to the screen. I was like unaware of everything around me. Um, the second time though, I went and see at this time in 1999. I was 20 somewhere. I was mm -hmm. somewhere in there giving my age away. But um, I, I lived, I was really young. I lived in the hood, <laughs> like my first apartment. And I went, the theater I went to was in a uh, urban environment, I guess. That's that's how we say it now in the PC world. But um, <laughs> that was a very interesting film viewing experience. Some of my best, best movie going experiences were at that theater because that theater was very loud and vocal. Mm -hmm. And that and the sixth sense were probably my best uh same year by the way um movie going experiences and south park um mm, mm. <laughs> the commentary i got from there is better than any dvd commentary you'll ever get in your life or blue right now i guess uh yeah so that was like you said it was a great experience yeah mine was too i mean people were clapping and cheering and just talking and just wow that is i, I loved it so yeah, yeah, I don't know if I don't know if any Matrix movie will ever be able to live up to that, but I'd be okay if they could just you know stand next to it. Yeah, I um I think the the last time I was truly awe inspired by the Matrix was when the Animatrix came out and uh, they had the uh, second Renaissance. I think it was the second Renaissance, well, part one and two, when they talked about yeah. how the robots took over the the world and how we fucked it all up and stuff like that. But. Mm -hmm. With that said, um, I think we'll end it there because we've pretty much been talking for a long time now. Longer than our Spider-Man. You didn't talk What's about that? the post-credit scene. I don't want to talk that about I that. I didn't no, see. Um, no, the, <laughs> the post-credit sequence, to be fairly honest, and if you go to the theater, just when you get home, just watch it on HBO Max. It's not worth the 12 minutes of credit sequence or whatever, however long it is. You go back to the video game people, and they're discussing how to make money. And all they say is cat videos, and then it ends. That's the whole entire and credit sequence. It doesn't lead into a Matrix 5. It's not No Way Home with the Doctor Strange trailer. It's just, hey, let's do a funny gag, and we'll make you wait 15 minutes for that gag. And It was like the end of it. Avengers, the first Avengers yeah, the shawarma shawarma. thing, yeah. where they're just sitting around, and you're like, I waited for this. I didn't see it. I've still not seen mm. it, um, because I was told <clears throat> at the end of the movie, yeah, there's not one. So I didn't wait around. I was yeah. like, I'm not going to wait around if, if there's not one. And apparently and there was really, one. <laughs> and if you're really desperate, you can just go on YouTube and find it. So, but anyways, that'll do it. Like I said, this isn't the worst movie I've seen this year. That is another movie, which I talked about during the or, or spoiler review, but it has a lot of problems to me. Jacob, you as well said you have problems with it, but you really enjoyed it. I really, I mean, like I said, I thought we were just going to start yelling at each other, but I, I think we respect each other's opinions enough <laughs> to know that that's not going to happen but we can come to some kind of medium conclusion to this whole thing but sure. you know 
it's nice to see another Matrix film back in the theaters. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed us talking for however long we've been talking. You know, it took me like eight hours to edit this video. But with that said, Jacob, it's been awesome to talk to you again. Uh, I think this is going to start becoming a regular thing because, you know, it's nice to have somebody back and forth to talk to. I love doing spoiler reviews and stuff like that. And he explains, but I think it's cool to have like a, you know, another person to talk to kind of talk off. So with that said, it's been awesome to talk to you. Thank you for coming back on. Uh, but with that said, where can they find you if they want to reach out and go, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Um, <laughs> you can find me at my YouTube channel, Jacob Anders Reviews on YouTube. And I'm also on Twitter at Red Neville 2. And that's about it. I Oh, you can also find me on this guy's channel doing the Fifth Dimension podcast every week, usually on Mondays, talking about the Twilight Zone so yeah it's not too old for you check it out <laughs> a great show and um yeah it's uh the unfortunate thing is when this records the next day the new episode will post when this posts and i got really sick so i didn't have a chance to edit it but be aware if you're watching the end of this there is a new video coming on thursday i promise so uh but with that said you can find me at movie emporium fifth dimension i think is one of the funnest podcasts i've done in a long time and i've done a couple which didn't work out too well Check it out. We go in depth about the the Twilight Zone, which is probably to most of us the one of the great series of all time. But also reviews are on Movie Emporium and Twitter, Movie Emporium, all that good stuff. Otherwise, uh, that'll do it. And uh, if we don't see you before the end of the holiday and New Year's, have a great holiday and New Year's. And uh, that's it. We'll see you guys on whatever next video we do. Peace out. Merry Christmas. <laughs>